Futa Mali is still to come right here to let us know what is happening on the music scene, including Carnival this weekend. But for now, contemporary artist Silva Krupinska is back to introduce her Artist of the Month, fellow Slovakian artist Tomas Libertini, who sculptures with the help of bees. Sylvia, welcome back, girl. Thank you, Rosemary. Hello. It's so good to be here again. <laughs> good to have you. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. Rested after my holiday. Yes, <laughs> indeed. Did you catch any of the Olympics? I did. Actually, I watched the opening ceremony uh, on the screen in Portugal. Oh, really? <laughs> and, uh, but uh, yes, I went to see the atmosphere from the outside only. But yeah, I enjoyed it. Did you? I Oh, I was involved i was there we went to so many free events as well that was laid on it was absolutely superb now as an artist were you inspired by the olympics um i was actually there was a little piece i uh, i did a little card i produced called gymnast uh, with i joined my uh, photograph of of my previous work and i adapted it into a new artwork new print so that was one of the things but it's all about the atmosphere yes, and energy yes, isn't, yeah, isn't yeah. it yes so now now we're looking forward to the Paralympics, which starts next week as yes. well. So, yeah, it's all good. So now, Sylvia, a fellow Slovakian artist now. Um, what, are you being biased? <laughs> yes, I am. <laughs> <laughs> Partly, of course, I, I really, really love his work. And uh, I'm going to tell you about it today. Yes, please. Uh, I'm going to start telling you about the artist himself. And then I'll describe three artworks. And then we'll finish by recap and uh, t giving you all the contacts Fabulous. that you need. Fabulous. Thank you so much. Tomasz Gabsdil Libertini is his full name. He's artist and designer born in Slovakia, received his master's degree in 2006 at Design Academy in Eindhoven in Netherlands. Previously, he studied industrial and conceptual design, fine arts, painting and sculpture in Slovakia and also in America. He found his studio in Rotterdam, where he's living at the moment as well, and is focused on exploring design strategies in art and science, mm -hmm. including collaborating with the bees, like you mentioned. <laughs> Since he started working with the bees, it was five years ago, he worked with over one million bees. Me. Was he stung in the process? I bet, <laughs> I'm sure. In 2009, he was given the Designer of the Future Award, which was very prestigious, during acclaimed Art Basel. So that was magnificent. Mm. His works have recently been acquired by the Museum of Modern Art in New York, and other prestigious museums, which is fantastic. <laughs> um, yes, and I discovered his work at the Exhibition Roadshow, which was a festival during the Olympics here in London. And how old is Thomas? He, is, uh, he was born in 1979. So he's done a lot, hasn't he? Incredibly yes, for a young man. I know. Wonderful. Only a year younger. And I feel like <laughs> <coughs> I completely aspire to... <coughs> excuse me. Uh, <coughs> So I'm going to start talking by, uh, about agreement, the sculpture, mm. sculpture of peace I saw in, in the Exhibition Road show. Mm. And where was this road show? In Exhibition Road in uh, South Kensington, right. next to the Natural History Museum and yes. the Science Museum mm -hmm. between them. And the agreement is self-balancing architectural sculpture in the shape of a flower. It is about a meter long and it's all covered in yellow shades of honeycomb different shades of honeycomb produced by many thousands of bees <laughs> when i saw it it was in, in fact protected by glass the uh, vitrine which was about two meters high mm -hmm. to protect the bees and create a really good climate for them to to work uh, on their houses on on the honeycomb mm. the way it's been done and actually, agreement is a fusion of Libertini's planned and precise architectural structure that he gives them. He manipulates them, that they work on it. And of course, the several natural elements where the main part play the bees. Mm. But he is the creator. He tell, almost tells them what to do. And then there's just they do what they know the best to hey. make their honeycomb. So, uh, <laughs> confused you will be. So he mm. is directing the bees, you're saying? He is given a body, a structure, a skeleton to yes. the bees as an idea for them to build their house on it, cover it with right, honeycomb right. as they do. Okay. Normally, they would only do it very sim like straight, you know, yes. very straight. They're not familiar with that shape, but yes. because they cannot see 
that they are doing it differently. They yes. don't have that ability to take a step back understand, and see. He understand. is able to manipulate yes. them in that sense. So he gives them a framework. Does, yes. well, so where, where did he get this inspiration from to actually use bees in these sculptures? I think because of the repetitious, repetition they go through. The, the bees are very repetitive. Yeah. Libertini is very interested in the repetition of the processes mm -hmm. and also ability to manipulate those. And uh, the beeswax, he had already started working before without the, the bees themselves, but he, he found it a little bit... Uh, not able to do really what he wanted so mm. he he went step further and he started work directly with the bees mm. so the composition that you just spoke about how long did it take for the bees to actually i suppose construct yes. <laughs> that sculpture it was created in uh, different places it wasn't created in uh, england it was created in fact in slovakia over three months two and a half to three months the bees had chance to build the houses on these structures but they're fragmented mm -hmm. and then he brought those covered already with the honeycomb and put them together in that in that flower shape and brought new sets of bees but that i saw in the exhibition and they just continued with the creation of what they were started filling in the gaps and making wonderful uh, turns quite magnificent <laughs> <laughs> and does he use special bees are there particular bees from a particular country no, uh, because he worked with the beekeeper, beekeepers in Slovakia. That's where he started. Right. But uh, he had help with the, you know, from the beekeepers here in England as well. The what I have to mention is that the bees they come to him. They're always young bees. They're, right. The bees and they have a new a new queen and they they stay there and work on it together, protecting uh, the yes. queen and yes. and having their house from yes. it. Yes. Amazing. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so that's Tomas Lipi. How do you say his, pronounce his surname? Did I pronounce it properly? Tomas Gabsdil Libertini. Libertini, yes, indeed. For once, I know how to definitely pronounce it well. <laughs> <laughs> if you just tuned in, Sylvia Kropinska is in the house talking about her art. Sylvia Kropinska is still in the house talking to us about her artist of the month, who is fellow Slovakian artist. Thomas Libertini. Now, Sylvia, um, we've spoken about the sculpturing with the bees, but I want to know what Thomas's thought process is, you know, with all this sculpturing. Yes, that was one of the, when I talked to the artist, that was one of the strong points he was trying to make that his work is not not just about the process of of bringing these bees and bringing the yellow uh, honeycomb and showing to people the shapes and the geometry of it. It's more about the repetition that goes in 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 the whole process, the repetition of the the either sculpting or using different materials and manipulation of those materials. Similarly, comparing the bees to the material, he manipulated the bees into making something that they wouldn't do in their everyday life mm. and because they can't take the step back and see see they're doing it differently that was a, be it was a beautiful tragedy in their lives and uh, they, they, they couldn't see it because they were the bees mm. similarly perhaps he's looking at the fact that we we do the same we we work and sleep and do the same thing every day and how to know oneself before you die, how to know it? That's the the most main, the one of the main questions he's trying to raise and explore in his work. Okay, so he's trying to get into our psyche. Yes, okay. it's, it's very, it's almost philosophical or, yeah. or almost very um, sensual. Mm. It's very, very deep, deep meaning of, of the work rather than just visuals, the mm. decorativeness yeah. of them. Okay, so you said that you're going to cover three of his works. You've done, you've covered one. And what yes. are the other two, please? The, the another one, very different one, is called the paper vase made in 2007. It's paper and wood glue that were main ingredients in it it's 30 centimeters high 25 by 25 centimeters are the other dimensions uh, it's made by layering square sheets of paper and each sheet of paper has a print of a tree on it but by doing that repetitively all perhaps a thousand times you cr the artist created a brick of paper which was pressed down very tightly with the wood glue that was holding it together after that the next stage is shaping this piece into a shape of a vase he used the wood turning equipment which is used normally when the wood is turned and they, the, it can be shaped by chisels mm. so similarly that was turning fast spinning and the, it was 
shaping in with different shavings and uh, sandpaper and and blades achieving the shape of the vase mm-hmm. what's really important in this piece is not just the element of the shape and a beautiful smooth surface but also the inner quality of the tree being inside in each layer of the vase mm-hmm. but also what happened each pixel that was opened that was shaped the pixels were suddenly showing out on the outside as the vase was created because as you shave the layers the tree was showing through little pixels and creating another image of of a, of a tree on the outside so just to clarify the most important thing about this piece is the inner inner d- depth of the meaning of the piece not just the decorativeness of of the outside but also the interior the really what we're searching for, the, the meaningfulness of, yeah. of the works. You try to make connection with the piece by, by d- doing this really laborious process and uh, a real beauty and respect for the piece. You can see when you see it straight away, it's beautiful, magnificent, and it's got a lot into it. So we're talking about a paper vase, yeah? But you said, you know, the actual process makes the, I suppose, the, um, the product hard. So I wonder, you know, if you put water in the vase, then <laughs> would it come out? Would it seep out? Probably uh, not, as it, it's so rigid. It is rigid. not meant to. That's not actually the point of the vase. It's called because because of the shape and the design and mm. the classical. But what's more important about this is rather than the symbol of a vase, what's the meaning of the tree being inside, but also on the outside, and the paper. So there's like a circle, full mm. circle of a tree mm-hmm. that is beautiful uh, uh, about this one. And so I can move on to my last one quickly. Mm. It's called The Vessel. I saw that one in the design gallery in London called Fumi. Uh, that, that's the gallery that represents uh, Libertini. Mm-hmm. The Vessel is another very good example of repetition of the elements and processes. Uh, the bees are again manipulated and they create this big, vase looking vessel. Uh, it is 50 centimeters tall. Uh, object and is again yellow with the honeycomb, covered with the honeycomb. And as I said before, it's not natural for the bees to, to make round, curvy shapes, uh, but the artists manipulate them into this. Uh, they almost blindly do this, but they don't know about this. So uh, it's almost this irony in life, uh, you know, how, how it's all built. But there's an exchange going on. It's not just using the bees they they get the house they get additional uh, food and they're protected so there is a little bit like a contract between the artist and the, the bees mm. they all get something out of it <laughs> as it should be in life yes yeah yes. so so where can we see his work because time is running out yes oh so before uh, I, I forgot to mention of course go to my blog mm-hmm. there is an article sylvia krupinska dot wordpress.com which is s-i-l-v-i-a-k-r-u-p-i-n-s-k-a dot wordpress.com or if you're in Bratislava on 19th to 23rd of September there is a contemporary design festival called Design Weekend Uh, go and see Libertini's work there and I'm sure he'll welcome you check out all the details again on my website including his amazing website Mm. you mustn't miss the images Uh and did you say that he's also exhibiting his work now is it in New York uh, now here at the moment no I saw his work in, in the Fumi Gallery Hill in London uh, he's got work in various collections in different museums uh, and uh, and everything else you can find out on Libertini's website yeah. the details on it are on my blog as always okay wonderful Sylvia thank you so much and welcome back thank you we look forward to understand and learn about another artist next month it's been my pleasure we are colorful, colorful. Your music, your voice.